Hey guys, Obelisk here. I'm back with another installment of my little uh, Day Out class overview video series. Uh, today I'm looking at the Minstrel, which is a class I really haven't touched in years and years. So, um, But still, it's pretty much the same class as it's always been. Um, same concepts apply. So we'll go ahead and get into it. I'm going to share some, uh, some just specking tips. I mean, Minstrel specs I mean, there, there are a few variations, but they're all about the same, roughly. I'm going to go over their abilities, what they can do, um, maybe some template choices for various things, RAs, um, just some general strategy behind Minstrel Play, um, maybe primarily in group, but also some solo stuff too, I suppose. This might be a long one because there's a lot of strategy stuff involved. Maybe not. I don't know. Minstrel is a pretty simple class, but going through the mechanics of the Minstrel is going to be the interesting part about mainly the pet charm, like the pulsing pet charm. That's kind of that's what minstrels are about in my opinion um so I, I need to explain that well um so strap in guys we're gonna go in game here this is uh my minstrel the uh, uh it's my little pet friend that i got here anyway um so minstrel spec we'll look at this one this is probably a standard group spec i'd imagine 50 instruments pretty much a given on any uh any minstrel spec i think everyone's gonna gonna go uh 50 instruments because you really need to for your pet. The more instruments you have, the easier it is to maintain charms. Um, I'm charming a level 56 pet here and not really having a ton of issues with being rank seven and 50 instruments. So let's see. And then your weapon. I go thrust, you can go slash. Slash is probably better for utility, honestly. I don't know why I'm thrust, just am. I guess that's what I expected it last time I played it. Uh, I think slash has a back snare and a side snare, right? So probably go slash, anyway. Your slash thrust and a little bit of stealth. Um, one spec option would be to go higher stealth. You can either drop your weapon down quite a bit. That's probably what you do. And then raise your stealth. If you want to be a stealth minstrel, go to probably composite stealth. Put 11 stealth in your template and then get 50 stealth um, with your item bonus and realm rank bonus. And just drop your slash or thrust or whatever it needs to be. Um, if you want climb walls, that's a 25 stealth. Just keep that in mind. So you can drop your thrust or slash down a little bit, pick up climb walls. I didn't really want it, I guess. Um, it's whatever. Um, or just go what I did go higher weapon spec and little stealth. You're good to go. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into uh, some abilities we got here. We're going to start, actually, let's start with songs. This is kind of where minstrels, I don't know, we use for, for a long time, at least. We'll start with the thing everyone knows minstrels for, and that's speed. That's pretty obvious. Minstrels have the best speed in the game. We'll sort share it now and now, but they, they have the highest speed, 204% um, speed, real fast. So that's all good. Um, we'll go to your other permanent song buffs that you can keep up permanently. Uh, the next one is this health regen buff. Um, it's really good. On minstrels, keep in mind now, you can put up all your songs at once and keep them up. So I have my speed up, I have my health regen song up, I have my power regen song down here. It's a red crack or palm or whatever you want to call it. 10 extra power per tick. Um, that's, so I have all three up right now. Let's see, I have another song that's in a different spec. Let me go and put it up though just to show you. I can stack all my songs, have them going and keep my pet. You used to, in the olden days, you can only have one song up and your pet counted as a song, you'd only have one pulse chant thing up. So what minstrels would have to do is they'd have to run around and please don't let me LD here. I'm sorry, I've been having internet issues where I'll lag out. There we go, I'm good. But you can, minstrels would always have to cast your song and then recharm the pet. Cast your song and then recharm the pet literally the whole entire day. Even in fights, if they wanted to keep speed up, they'd have to do that in fights. It was a huge pain, but they add where you can do two, two songs up at once and then a little while after that they add you can do, just do all of them why not let's let's make you play all the songs anyway um so we're, let's go to the temporary songs that we have here um and i'm lagging out again and we're back anyway we have a celerity song it's a 2000 range celerity so it's pretty good um it gives 37 percent celerity which is paladin celerity or warden celerity the highest level celerity it gives um, it's kind of a, um, kind of a slowish cast, not too slow, but it's castable on the move. Um, but one thing about the song that's, um, kind of, um, I guess unique to it is it is interruptible. So you can't just 
put this up in combat and then start wailing on people with your little little dagger thing down here so gotta be uh gotta be uninterrupted for that the next thing is this cool little thing it increases your secondary magic by 20 percent. that's a pretty big number one thing about this it does not stack or even coexist with magic charges so if you look here now i have 20 percent secondary cold resist i don't know why i'm pointing at my screen like you can see me anyway 20 percent cold resist on the secondary deal if i put my magic charge up let's cancel this i don't know if it'll go up if i don't have it up like say i uh used to why is it not working yeah, there we go all right put it up so now i have my 10 percent from this this deal and i try to cast this again let's see what happens you get the little resisting it's only it doesn't even cast on me it doesn't coexist i don't know if this is a bug or not it should probably coexist it's kind of dumb that it doesn't but keep that in mind if you have a like dragon ring up it won't stack with that so you, i don't know i'm actually not sure if this is interruptible let's try it okay it's ruptable so you can't cast it while in combat or while you're getting rupted so keep that in mind and the next thing is we get this cool little range boost thing for your group it's a 10 percent range boost you throw it up and your group has more range now really cool like the last one let's see if it's ruptable oh, i might have been too far in the cast let's see if okay yeah this is ruptable as well so all three of these temporary songs are interruptible similar to mez um speaking of mez let's go to it so no i don't even know what my mez key is so let's just click this here it's not even bound all right so my flute mez like your standard um still challenge dual accept um your standard little flute mez movable you get or castable in the move good stuff the delve says it lasts 20 seconds it's been on my sort for a few seconds and it lasted for when i looked at 30 seconds so that delve is a straight lie um on most classes that don't have resist and stuff maybe 35 seconds i'll, I'll do an update later I'll, I'll pay more attention to how long it actually lasts on my sork with no uh sort of mez reduction or anything but it's definitely longer than 20 seconds like it says it's always said that though it's been a, a either a display bug or a bug with the duration for years um i'm just gonna assume it's a display bug since they probably would have fixed it i hope anyway we're done with songs now let's go into instruments um you got your demos um which is cool people like that just deem as your friends um the second thing and this is where we start to get really minstrelly is a uh is this the control pet charm yes it is so this is the control pet charm you can only charm yellows with this um and you can't release them in combat you can release them but you this is a hard cast thing you have to actually cast it um like I said, only yellow pets, so it caps out there. You probably don't want to use this one. Uh, I'll tell you why in a second. Since we're already talking about this, let's go to the, the big charm, the pulsing charm, the instant charm, which is how I have this red centaur charmed. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So I'm not sure I can show you this in a realm duel because I think anytime I release this pet, it's going to break the duel. But what you can do is if your your pet gets mezzed or rooted what you can do is you can release it like this i have a release macro and it releases it and any cc that's on it gets broken and now i'm LDing. anyway so I'll, I'll talk through it while my thing lags out but um there we go so any cc that's on the centaur gets broken so if if you're if you got your pet on a, a bard and some druid roots your pet and you don't want your pet rude just release the pet and right, let's see let's send it to it or let's at least make it go to target so i release my pet am i lagging nope i re nope let's go on follow i release my pet and then the thing pulses i don't have to recast it again it'll it'll recharm it if i want to be quick about it i can i can target my pet release it 
and then recharm it instantly by clicking my charm again. And I have this all queue bound very conveniently. So a tip, um, actually I'll get into this more later. Let me explain just what it does. So this is, this is the big thing. It's, it's your pulse charm. I'll come back to this later and really get into it. Um, the next thing we have is just water breath. Who cares? It's just group water breath. Then we have this interesting thing um, that I've never used before. I've never even been in a group with it, but it is to help you siege. You throw it up. It's a minute and a half reuse. It's 15 second duration. It's like a big fault finder, I guess, for your group. It's cool. Um, a big thing that minstrels get is this instant stun. It's a 10 second reuse instant stun that lasts for nine seconds, I believe. It doesn't have a delve here, but the, the highest level one lasts for nine seconds. Pretty good. Affected by debt, but really good on non-debt tanks and things like that, or casters, support, and the like. Um, then you get one of your instant DDs. 15 second reuse, 1000 range. Keep in mind the stun's also 1000 range. So rel not short range, but not long range instant rubs. So this is where the like the interrupt minstrel comes into play. You have this up every 10 seconds. So you, you need to DD someone with it. And then you have another DD down here. It's the same thing, 1000 range, 15 second reuse, and you DD another DD with it. So you have two instant DDs on 10 second reuse timers at 1000 range. You have another instant interrupt is the uh, Cant of Perplexity. Um, that's your Confuse. Uh, it's a 30 second reuse, but it's just another instant interrupt with 1000 range. Um, Confuse can also be used on pets to instant kill them. When I say pets, I mean um, pets like, like um, temporary pets, like uh, on Alp you'll be fighting things like um, I guess gate pets from the SM gate, if you know what I'm talking about, or astral blade pets. You can instant kill those with those. Um, it's really useful against thergs, but obviously as a minstrel, you're not fighting a lot of thergs, but mainly used for erupt. Um, you can also wonk out mentalist pets with it, and people can make your pet really funny by confusing it. So that's one of the uh, things you got to watch out for. Um, next, we have... Um, we got through all our instant erupts. We have this great crescendo. Now, this is super interesting. So this raises your in-combat movement speed to 160%, which is just a little bit below caster speed, the 174 caster speed that they get. It's really good. So like say this Mentar, let's, let's just release my pet, have it beat on me. So this is my normal run speed while in combat. Centaur is beating on me maybe. I crescendo myself and I can just get away. And also I can, I can DD something and it doesn't break my speed. And it lasts for like nine seconds. Super strong. So if you need to catch up to something, get away from something, you just use this. Um, it is it gets affected by speed orbs. So it's not like crazy. You can't like run through speed orbs. So it's like a charge without the CC immunity of it, and the the speed orb immunity. But it's like a uh, like a poor person's charge. But it's a nine second cast time or nine second duration with a 45 second recast that's super strong and it's instant really good ability really 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 good ability so crescendo is awesome um next we have our aoe mez it's a really slow cast time um slash dual challenge let me just show you how slow this cast time is um let's see what we got boom I, I, full disclosure i don't have any dex buffs so it's Gonna cast a little bit faster than that, but it's still not very good. And it lasts for about 25 seconds on my sort. So the dull being 30 seconds uh, lasts a little bit less, I guess, with resist. I think I have duration in this template, so I don't know. It's not it's not the best mez, but if you got an AoE mez or got an AoE erupt, you can use that, you can get it off. Anthem of Albion, reduce siege damage, um, increases siege attack speed. It's one of those uh, siege things, like earlier. Um, Eight second duration, five second recast. Keep it all the, up all the time if you're in siege. I don't really siege much, so I can't really test to it. Uh, here's one of your instant pulse um, chant things you have. It's a melee health buffer to uh, physical damage. Um, takes thirty percent of any damage um, up to one twenty. So if someone hits you for a hundred, it absorbs thirty of it. So cool. Keep it up. It's free. May as well. Um, other specs, your your thrust and slash. Like I said, thrust is probably not the way to go, but it's not, I don't know, it's probably not the way it goes. There's probably no arguing it. Um, 
you get a side style that has a uh, attack speed reduction. Um, you're not really landing a lot of after blocks on reverse or on minstrel, so I'm not really gonna talk about it. You get an anytime style um, at 34, probably. You get a back style that slows, so that's cool. You get a back snare, um, and then yeah, lion tooth. You get you get a high high damage anytime, so that's cool, I guess. Now slash, on the other hand, it's probably the way to go. Probably go 44 slash. You get a back snare, just like you do in thrust, but you also get a side snare, which is cool. You get a high damage anytime style. Um, your block chain's all right. If you can block, you get an attack speed debuff. You get another anytime chain, a two-part chain. It's probably not worth using. Just use aim and slash, I'd imagine. Um, one interesting thing, if you're like soloing or something, you get cross slash, a front style that has an attack speed debuff. So use that. Um, and you, that follows up with the bleed style. So that's really good for solo for uh, negating health regen from Mythereans and the such. So yeah, it's pretty much the melee spec. Um, not at, nearly as important as what we talked about with the, the spells and stuff. Um, the rank five is a PBOE mez, five minute reuse. It's not a super long mez, but it's, it's a 600 radius, it's huge. Um, just, it's good, I guess. Um, like I said, you gotta be careful with it because mez immunity, but you can get a whole group with it easy. Um, if they're stacked. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it for minstrel spec stuff. Um, I'll talk about RAs. Um, I think for groups, I think maybe group and solo RAs might be similar. Um, you're gonna want some purge, maybe purge three. Keep in mind, if you keep your pet alive and you're using the pulse charm, you can use it to break your own CC pretty consistently and pretty pretty well if once your pet dies you can't so if you have your pet you become unseeable and i'll tell you how in a second so you still want some purge though because you have zero debt so if you get casted stun you're out for the whole casted stun if you have to eat a mez and you can't pull your pet back to break it or you lose your pet you're gonna have to purge it so i, I i'd get at least purge three probably um, speed of sound, you gotta have speed of sound. I'd get at least speed of sound two. Once you get higher rank, if you really want to, speed of sound three, it's just for duration to get away from stuff. Sauce two with some duration is gonna be plenty, but if you have the point, sauce three, whatever. Um, other than that, mastery concentration is actually kind of good. Not, not a necessity, but you can, it doesn't affect one, your DD damage, but what you can do with mock is you can mock and demez someone, which is pretty strong. If everyone else is erupted and you gotta get a clutch demez out, you can mock demez. You can also mock flute mez. It's gonna greatly reduce your mez uh, dur duration on flute mez, but you, you'll you be an interrupt machine just running around like flute mez and DD and stuff. You'll be crazy back there, especially if things already have mez immunity. You just mock and just like keep them erupted. That's, that's cool, you can flute mez off that. So keep that in mind. Um, AM. I don't even know how to say this word. Ameliorating melodies, whatever. It's a, a group hot, it's a 15 minute reuse, which is kind of high, I think, for that RA. But it's it's pretty good, especially at higher levels, um, especially like in small men, you know, it keeps your friend up a lot. I don't know how big it is in groups, but I guess if you're a super high ranked minstrel, you may as well. I mean, what's gonna put your point into damage? Probably not. Um, IP, I think IP is good on minstrel, even in groups, uh, at least IP two. You can go IP three if you want. Um, it's just an extra heal up there, keep you alive. And Minstrel's all about surviving, in my opinion, in groups. Um, so I, I go RAs that keep me alive in groups at least. And then solo, obviously, pretty much everyone wants IP. Um, in groups, I like to get AM. If you're fighting caster groups, definitely get AM because you don't have a ton of hit points and you don't have like an insane amount of magic resist from something weird. So you need as much AM as you can get. Uh, so I'd get AOM, AOM, seven, AOM 7, sorry, AOM 7. Uh, maybe if I'm super high rank, I might even go for AOM 9 if I can get it with all those actives. I just want to be invincible if I can. I want to stay alive as long as I can just so I can interrupt. That's all you're there for is just to wreak havoc, interrupt. You're not really there to kill stuff. You're there to erupt, and the better you can stay alive, the tankier you are, the better you, do, you are at doing that. Maybe even get some toughness. The value of toughness isn't super good, but it's not terrible, I guess. Um some extra tankiness uh, master focus might be okay if you want like your stun's pretty low level it's level 40 your mez is level um, 42 
so like AOM2 might be a, not not bad. AOM2, even AOM3 might not be bad. Um, other than that, you're pretty much free to, to play around with. If you want some wild power so your TTs can crit, go for it, Master Majory, whatever. Who, who cares? Dual threat, I don't know. Knock yourself out. Um, wild minions so your pet can crit, that's okay. But I think you really want to survive. And solo, if you're, if you're going solo RAs, you might want a little more damage from your DDs because you're, you're the one having to kill stuff, so you, you do need a little damage help. But in groups, I just get stuff that makes me survive and helps group. That's, that's what I would do. Um, now on to templates. Um, if you're watching my other videos, I'm always all about the, the Cursed Blood Gauntlets. They have the 25% uh, the instant heal, probably heal you for about 700 or so on Minstrel. It's pretty good. Um, in, in, in group settings, you're gonna want the, um, the Astral Cloak of Heroes. That's the way to go because it has the, um, what is it? 30% secondary magic resist. Um, so if you're getting nuked, pop that, and you're having a better time than the dude that doesn't have it. Um, the cloak, you can use the loyal cloak also because it has it actually has a better magic resist charge. So if you can fit this in, probably fit, use this. Um, and, and you can also summon a pet. And if your pet dies, if like if I send this this little centaur in and it dies, and I still have my cloak charge up, I can summon a new pet and charm it on the go with my pulse instant charm which is super strong. Um, so I'd, I'd put this cloak in if I were you, if I could fit it. Um, for solo, it doesn't matter as much. You can probably get away with that other world cloak with the SOM style proc. Uh, but for groups, you definitely want that big magic resist. Um, solo and group, I'd probably try to get a, a melee charge in. Um, even though in groups, this, or sorry, a magic charge and melee charge. But in groups, you, like I said earlier, you can't use the, uh, the, like the astral gestures ring and use your little cool little buff down here. But this isn't going to be up 100% of the time. It's only a 15, se uh, 15 second duration and it can be erupted. So it might be better off just to have the gestures ring up all the time. And hopefully they'll fix the fact that these don't coexist. I think they should coexist. They shouldn't stack, but they should be able to be up at the same time. And once the better one fades, you still have the, the slightly worse one. Um, so hopefully they fix that. Who knows? Um, template wise, hallowed harp. Okay. I don't have the harp on me. But it's I think it's ancient harp or the uh, the frozen harp or whatever. But the the Aureolite harp has a winged helm charge on it, and a magic charge if I'm not mistaken, like the magic resist charge. You can run two of those if you want. You could literally have two winged helm charges in your template from your harp. That's a 75% style reduction charge. Makes you super tanky to tanks. Or you can have that and a magic charge. It's just e it's easy to template a minstrel. Or if you want to, you can have the ancient harp. And then a cursed staff, which is the Aureolite staff, which has a melee resist charge. You can put that on your back, and you can get your magic charge and your melee charge from your weapons. And plus that ancient harp already has really good utility, so you'll probably use it anyway. So that makes templating a lot easier, so you don't have to worry about trying to fit those into your the rest of your temp. Um, Otherworldly ring charges are important. Um, the Chapter 6 Curse Bracer, the... Um, Dream Conqueror Bracer is important. Those both have stacking 5% AF slash hit, um, hit point buffs, so you can get a total 10% from those if you put them both up at the same time. That's good. I think Croc Tier Ring's really good on Minstrel. Um, it's one of those survivability um, things. The, the making your songs AOE, that's whatever, but the fact that this has 5% conversion to damage is really good. You add that to like an Otherworldly Belt, which has 3%, and I think probably one of the cursed set items has a few percent you can get 10 percent conversion pretty easy and that's essentially free 10 percent uh, resist on top of that so it just makes you even more tanky um what you also probably want if you're soloing is the ghostly mellow valor which is a 10 percent heal over time uh, i think it's every five seconds it heals you for 10 percent pretty dang strong for 30 seconds um especially if you're doing a lot of kite and throw that up kite which Play styles, you'll, you'll probably kite a lot of minstrel. I'll get into that in a second. Um, the cursed set. So the three item cursed set on minstrel, if you have all three, your stun increases by two seconds. So that's pretty strong, I think, especially in like if you're soloing or small manning, where your stun's important and actually landing a lot and on good targets, it's really good. Um, in groups, it might not be as important. I don't know if a lot of minstrels use their stun 
and they want it to actually land. Um, sometimes, yeah, but sometimes they're just using erupts, you know, and they're giving them stun immunity. But at the same time, they're stun out for a long time. But um, so that's actually a really good set in my opinion. So maybe try to fit that in your temp. The chest piece also has the curse set has the heal over time, so that's really good for solo. Also, you want a heal over time chest. Um, other than that, I think Mr. Templates are pretty open. I mean, that's not really open. There's a lot of must-have items, I guess, but you can use whatever. Trader's Dagger in groups. Use Trader's Dagger if you have to melee because it procs a little pet that lasts for a while. Um, all their weapons don't really help you that much because they increase your damage and you, you're there for rups. So anything that helps you rupt is good. Um, so use Trader's procs. That's really important. Um, play styles. Yeah, solo, you're going to want to probably have a decent pet. And like I said, with solo RAs, you'll probably want to go a little more damage. Like maybe some, even some wild minion for solo and some wild power, master majory. Uh, maybe not melee stats, but probably ma caster stats, magic stats, because your DDs will hit hard and you can use them while you're kiting. Um, that's big because minstrels do really well when they can kite. You throw your pet in, you throw a, a, especially if you go back and buff it or you have CL buffs, get CL buffs too on minstrel if you're soloing. You can get a pet and then throw in some buff bonus gear and then put CL buffs on it and it'll give it a little boost. Um, so if you get like a Templar or a Grunt or I don't know, you go crazy and go to Midgard and get a Frost Stallion and you throw it some little buffs or if you want to get really crazy, take it back to your bot and buff it, that pet's going to be hitting pretty hard and it's going to be pretty hard to kill. So you'll throw your pet in and then you can either one go up and melee it or whatever, uh, whatever, but throw your DDs into it and then I like to sit back and disease it with my seal disease and then let my pet beat on it not let it get to me. Uh, maybe let it get to me for a little bit, but be ready to kite at any point because minstrels struggle a little bit uh, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with other people and their melee damage is kind of underwhelming. So keep them diseased with your seal disease and keep nuking them whenever you can and keep your pet on them. Um, and CC if you get ads, CC them. If you want to mez someone, take your pet off it, mez it, and then fight it again. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do. You probably shouldn't die to anything 1v1 on a minstrel. You might not be able to kill it, but you should probably get away, especially with Crescendo, Sauce, Zephyr, Phase. You can just get away all the time. Like You can get away. Crescendo's on a 45 second recast. <laughs> you can get away. Um, so yeah, probably shouldn't die to much on a minstrel. Like I said, you can't kill everything, but you can get away if you want to. Um, in groups, what you're there for is reps, like I said earlier. So just use one DD on one person, use another DD on some other person, use your stun to erupt, use your um, your confused down here to interrupt, and use your pet to interrupt. Put your pet on a different target than what you're erupting. Your pet will keep erupting it. If the pet gets CC'd, like I said earlier, I'll have to stay. So my pet friend is over here CC'd. So what I do is I have this, if you look at this little quick bar, I have this little pet button right here on my seven. How I get that is I go down to the name, the health bar of my pet, hold down shift and click it. And it brings me that. I put it there and I cue bind it somewhere that's easy for me to get to. And what that does, if, if you notice, I'm not targeting anything. I'm not even looking at my pet. And I press seven, or I click seven, and it targets my pet. So that targets my pet. So I'm in the middle of like, it's chaotic. I notice my pet's mouse or someone tells me my pet's mouse. I target it and then I hit my release button and to get your release button, hold down shift and click the release button down here. And it'll give you a little cube on, you can throw it there. I target my pet, click my release button, and then I can double click my charm and recharm it. Or it'll recharm by itself, I'll, I'll show you. Click release, and then the charm will pulse in a second and recharm. But if you wanna recharm it quickly, you double you double hit your, your charm to one to cancel it down there you see, and then the other one to recharm. Um, so that's why you target the pet, so you have a target on it. You don't have to target the pet, but that's the most efficient way to make sure it gets recharmed quickly. Um, also, while you're running around, your pet might resist, especially if you have a, a high level one. If you see it right here, it says whatever resists your charm. Um, if it resists two charms, if you see it resists twice, target the pet, and then just double hit your... Um, Double hit your charm, and it'll make sure it's charmed. It'll recast that charm. You can kind of spam it too, like you can really like. So you should never really lose your pet because you can always like recast the charm in case it resists. You'll lose your pet if it resists too many times. So if you see it resist twice, recharm it while you're running around. Um, other than that, like I said, 
Release your pet, it'll break a mez root on it and then recharm it quickly. Now, if you get mez rooted, say my pet's like off dominating this dude and someone mezzes me. So now I'm mezzed. If my pet's not mezzed, what I'll do is I'll hit passive. So I'll hit passive, follow. So it'll run to me and once it gets to me, I'll release it and I'll usually cancel my charm and then it'll hit me and then I'll recharm it. The reason you want to cancel your charm before you release is like right now I'll... Well, hold on, let me recharm. Okay, so I'm gonna release it and it's gonna recharm relatively quickly. If it doesn't hit me in that time to break my mez, I'll have to release it again. So just cancel charm, release pet, hits you, recharm. Now, if you're rooted, it's gotta hit you. So if you have PBT and you wanna get out of that root really quick, go up here, cancel PBT, release, cancel charm, and we'll recharm if it hits you. So you just gotta, it's gotta hit me and then boom, recharm it. Um, so yeah, you can use it to break your own CC. What happens if you and your pet both get mezzed or rooted at the same time? You have to first release your pet to break its CC. You can't cancel your charm when you're released or when you're mezzed. So you have to cancel your charm and then it's gonna run to you. It's probably gonna get recharmed by the before it gets to you. So then you're gonna have to release it again. So keep that in mind, but your pet should never be mezzed rooted. Just, if you see it, just release it and recharm it real quick. It's insane. Unseasonable pet. And then if you get mezzed or rooted, bring your pet back to you. I would bring it back charmed first. I, I wouldn't just release it and let it run back on its own. You could get mezzed or something. And if your pet gets mezzed out of charm and you're mezzed, you can't recharm it if you cancel your charm. So be careful there. So bring it back to you. If your pet's not CC and you are, and then release it and let it hit you um, really strong. Um, other than that, I think that's the main thing. Um, it's, you just get in there and erupt and you make sure you and your pet aren't CC'd and you stay alive and you just have your pet doing something and you doing something as well. Um, I know that was a bit long, but minstrels are kind of a, uh, a unique and can be a complicated, they're a hard class to play. They're one of the harder classes to really get right. There's a lot of buttons. There's a lot of APM involved. You got to make sure you got to manage your pet. You got to manage yourself. You have four instant interrupts on relatively low cooldowns. You gotta erupt everything. Frontline tanks are stressful anyway, but a frontline eruptor like a minstrel is really hard. It's a super hard class, but um, to really get right, a lot of people can play it and do okay, but to really get the class right, it's hard. Um, if you, like I said, I'm, I'm I haven't played minstrel in years. I'm definitely not a minstrel expert. Um, it's probably the, the the best minstrel by by a by a, a good margin, and uh, probably the guy most knowledgeable about minstrel is Tom or Flick or his his minstrel's name's Yama. Um, so if you ever see him in game, he's the guy to ask about minstrel stuff. But if you have any more minstrel questions or anything, maybe I can answer them. I'll, uh, I'll do my best. But um, yeah, put it down in the comments. Um, if you have any tips, suggestions, anything I left out, let me know too. Um, I'm sure I left some stuff out. There's a lot of stuff going on. I tried to hit everything, but only so much I can remember doing this like off script. Um, if you have any suggestions, like I said, let me know. Um, anything you want me to do, any classes, let me know, man. Other than that, thanks for watching, guys. That was the uh, the Minstrel Class on Alb. Um, enjoy and have fun out there. We'll see you guys later.